You're looking at uh, this drug called l trombopag and you're adding it, you've been adding it to standard immunosuppression for this very difficult condition, aplastic anemia. Can you tell me what was the big thing that you were trying to focus on here and why were you using this new approach? Yeah, so um, essentially the reason that we used l trombopag is because we noted at the NIH in earlier trials, which we had used the drug as a single agent for patients with refractory severe aplastic anemia. These are patients who had fulfilled multiple rounds of therapy with immunosuppression and remained transfusion dependent. We treated them with l trombopag as a single agent and got very surprising results. Basically, 40% um, of those patients responded with blood count recovery and not just the platelets but the white cells and the red cells that was a very um, groundbreaking sort of uh, result to find and it was really logical at that point to consider using l pag for new onset severe aplastic anemia in combination with the standard treatment for severe yeah. aplastic anemia which is ATG and cyclosporin. The normal approach the, the normal use of l pag would be what in which situations? Yeah so the drug was actually developed um, to treat immune thrombocytopenia or ITP um, and and the drug was noted to have um, uh uh, the ability to stimulate the production of platelets. Um, it's a thromboquine receptor agonist, and that was really what it was designed for. It was FDA approved for the treatment of ITP originally, um, so it was actually very surprising to learn that the drug was capable of not only improving platelet counts, but red cells and white cell counts. And we think that this is because the thromboquine receptor is also on stem cells and hematopoietic stem progenitors. So it has a broad action, which uh, but some people might not have been expecting. They, no, we, nobody was really expecting that per se. But once in hindsight, it's quite logical that maybe that was that would occur. Lots of things are logical in hindsight, yeah, in but hindsight. nevertheless, very remarkable. Um, so uh, you decided to use it in aplastic anemia. What actually triggered your decision to try it? Yeah, so um, really it was based upon the surprising results um, uh, in, in refractory severe aplastic anemia. And we really were only trying it in that setting in hopes that maybe um, patients would uh, improve their platelet count and come off platelet transfusion. Right, so and you're trying to boost the platelets and yeah. you wave, yeah. you, you found you were getting a, a another benefit yes, as well. Yes, yeah. And then additionally, the idea is that the drug might actually be more helpful early on in disease. The idea being that maybe l pag was capable of actually expanding the stem cell pool in patients early on. And if you can ex expand the stem cell pool in these patients, the hematopoietic stem cell pool, you might actually boost response rates, boost count recovery, and prevent clonal progression. Okay, that's what might be. What did you do and what did you find? Yeah. So what we did is we actually are presenting data of 92 patients, um, which is actually a very large study for a very rare disease. Uh, and uh, what we did is we, we gave all of these patients standard immunosuppression with horse ATG for four days, cyclosporin for six months, and then we added in three consecutively enrolling cohorts, co consecutive and sequentially enrolling cohorts, we added l pag. In the first cohort, we gave it for um, about uh, six months, but starting at day 14, after ATG was delivered, in the second cohort, we gave it for an abbreviated period for three months. In the third cohort, we gave it immediately on day one out to six months. And what we found was overall, the response rate was around 86% overall, and this compares quite favorably, more than 20% higher um, compared to ATG and cyclosporin alone um, in our historic trials. And then our complete response rate was around 37%. And what we noticed is in the mo most recent cohort, where l pack cohort three, where l pack is actually delivered on day one, the overall response rate is now 95% and the complete response rate 60%. What about the potential impact on overall survival? Yeah, so we will have to see. I mean, but right now, the current survival on the study is 99%. We've had one death only in these 92 patients that have enrolled. Obviously, a longer follow-up period um, is going to be required to really fully assess that. But this is already a very, very good uh, result. What should doctors be thinking about changing in their approach to aplastic anemia in the light of what you've now discovered? Yeah, so I think that um, uh, we will have to see. You know, how, I think it's going to be um, uh, difficult to uh, not consider using this drug in some way, but it's really going to be up to the FDA to decide uh, whether or not the data, as it is, uh, or soon to be, will sh should be uh, make this uh, part of the relabeling uh, for the drug and part of the standard. It will really be up to you know the FDA to decide that. Would you use it off label? Well, I, I, I can't say, I can't really test to that because to be honest, at the NIH, we don't do anything other than clinical trials. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. So what's the uh, bottom line message for doctors to take note of right now then, do you think? 
Yeah, so I think um, one of the things that we're going to be aggressively uh, sort of doing is making sure that patients get evaluated quickly and treated quickly. Um, and uh, for us, moving forward at the NIH, what we'll be doing is doing more thorough genomic screening from both germline mutations um, for somatically acquired mutations that are seen in MDS AML. Um, and for us, moving forward, we think that it's really characterizing quickly the sort of genomic uh, uh, architecture of these patients moving forward is going to be very very important to determine their risk.